after, so, so you won't. Just, yeah, don't live it. Got it. Yeah. So this is just going to be a video. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yep. Whatever you need to move, as long as it's not the table, remember. <laughs> yep. They're going to, I'm going to get out of the way and they're going to move over. <laughs> okay. That's nice. <laughs> Okay. Ready? All right. Well, good morning. I'm Erica Williams, the Director of Communications for the Shelby County District Attorney's Office. Um, thank you all for joining us today as we provide an update in the Ezekiel Kelly case. I would like all of everyone to stand because um, you'll hear from Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy along with the trial team who have worked on this case. So we have Chris Laro, Jimmy Thomas, Forrest Edwards, and also our Associate Deputy DA, Ernest Brooks. After you will hear, after you hear from the DA, we'll take a few minutes for questions. I'll now turn it over to DA Mulroy. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. 
Uh, Ms. Williams has already introduced the members of the staff that stand behind me. Let me tell you that I have called you all here today because earlier this morning our office filed a notice of intention to seek the death penalty in the case of Ezekiel Kelly. Under the law, any first degree murder is at least theoretically eligible for the death penalty if there are present at least one of a number of statutorily enumerated aggravating factors. In this case, we allege that there are four such aggravating factors. They are, the defendant was previously convicted of one or more felonies other than the present charge whose statutory elements involve the use of violence to the person. Two, the defendant committed, quote, mass murder, unquote, which is defined as the murder of three or more persons, whether committed during a single criminal episode or at different times within a 48-month period. Three, the murder was committed in the course of an act of terrorism. And four, the murder was committed at random, and the reasons for the killing are not obvious or easily understood. This is the first death penalty notice that I have filed in my relatively short time as Shelby County District Attorney. I acknowledge that some people may have been wondering whether I would in fact take this action given my previously stated views on capital punishment. I've made no secret of my personal opposition to the death penalty as a policy matter. If I were a legislator, I would vote against it. But as DA, I have a duty to enforce the law as it is written, whether I agree with it or not. Now, I want to be clear. I reserve the right as district attorney, as any district attorney would, to allow my understanding of the operations and the limitations of our death penalty regime to inform my judgment in individual cases, in close cases, about whether a particular case deserves the death penalty. Indeed, any DA does that, whether they admit it or not. And in fact, given the same facts and circumstances, it may be the case, in close cases, that different district attorneys would reach different conclusions about whether to seek the death penalty. That is one reason why we have elections for DAs. But when the case isn't close, when the facts are sufficiently clear, either one way or another, then a district attorney acting in good faith sometimes has to come to the conclusion that the facts and circumstances compel a particular decision. I believe this is one of those times. This is not a close case. The defendant is alleged to have engaged in an hours-long, apparently random murder spree, killing three people and wounding three others, and terrorizing an entire city in the process. The city of Memphis was on lockdown for several hours because of the actions, as alleged, of the defendant. Again, this is not a close case. This is a case where the facts and circumstances, in my view, compel a particular result. We have provided discovery to defense counsel and to our understanding is they're continuing to research the case, including the background of the defendant. We will continue to cooperate with defense counsel and prosecute this case in court to see that justice is done. Thank you very much. I'll take any questions you may have. So you said that um, Mr. Attorney, yes. Sure. Well, the death penalty actually wasn't a major issue in the campaign. It didn't really come up all that often, but I won't reject the premise of your question. Even before the campaign, um, I've made no secret of my personal opposition to the death penalty as a public policy matter. Like I said before, as a legislator, I'd vote against it. But I think the people that voted for me understand that a DA has to follow the law, whether they agree with it or not. And sometimes 
the case isn't close. And I think this is one of those cases. I think those who voted for me would have to understand that if this case isn't death notice worthy, then no case is. Yeah, I had staff, including a victim witness coordinator and at least one of the attorneys, uh, contact the families of um, the, the victims, the people who had been killed, um, and they were aware of what I was planning to do and, and had no problem with what I was planning to do. Well, given the number of victims, the number of witnesses, the complexity of the case and the gravity of the case, I think it will take a fair amount of time, quite a long time uh, indeed. Um, I couldn't imagine this coming to trial in anything less than six months and probably a lot longer than that. It may very well be that the defense uh, you know, will ask uh, for more time. We intend to uh, you know, not unduly rush the case. In a case of this uh, gravity, we need to make sure that Every uh, you know, a f possibility of due process is being afforded to the defendant. But at the same time, I also recognize that I think the people of Shelby County would like to see this case resolved as quickly as possible, and we'll uh, try to do precisely that. Well, so here's, here's the thing. The purpose of this press conference is to talk about the case today in Ezekiel Kelly. So I, I don't want to get involved in a lot of other issues. But I will tell you this. We are planning on doing, and Ms. Williams can give you more details later, semi pretty regular press conferences, like maybe once every couple of weeks, in which I'll take questions about whatever it is you want to talk about. So I'll be happy to get into it then. And also, um, if you want, um, you know, I'll be happy to talk to you sort of offline uh, separately after this press conference. But I, I would like the press conference to focus on this relatively important matter. It's a, it's a case, obviously, of national interest, great public interest here. And, you know, as has been pointed out, this is the first time I've had to deal with this issue of whether to seek uh, death as a remedy. Well, it's public knowledge that um, he has one conviction for aggravated assault. And bear with me one moment. I believe that occurred in 2021. Um, yes, yes, right. So he pleaded guilty to aggravated assault uh, in April of 2021. And, you know, under the statutory regime, if there is a prior felony conviction for a crime of violence against the person other than the crime involved in question, that is one potential aggravating factor. And, of course, as I've indicated, that is not by any means the only aggravating factor that we allege to be present in this case. Nothing we do today precludes an ultimate resolution of this case on something uh, other than uh, death. And that's something that will have to be considered later on down the road, you know, as, as, as the case progresses. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.